Guys, I want to welcome Ron Patterson, a horticulturist with Utah State University Extension. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Dave. A lot of folks uh, gardening, and a lot of folks are having trouble with bugs and pests and disease and all kinds of problems. Does the heat add to that? Well, the heat the heat adds stress to the plants, and when mm -hmm. it starts to get to a certain temperature above the 90 degrees, typically the plants are stressed okay. quite a bit more. Okay, so, so, so there are three that we want to talk about today, particular issues that, that uh, do come into contact with plants, and, and most people are trying to grow tomatoes. What's one of the big problems that you have with tomatoes? Well, the, the big challenge is to know what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, we, we do have certain problems with the tomatoes. Now, this is a tomato leaf. This is one leaf, okay. and it's a healthy leaf. Mm -hmm. And so you go out and you look at your tomatoes and you say, oh, well, that looks pretty good. Are we seeing a good and a bad one here, or are those both healthy? Well, those, no. those are the, that's the fruit that we're looking at right there, and um, looks like you probably got some, maybe some russet mites on the one on the right. Okay. The one on the left looks pretty good and healthy. And we'll talk about russet we'll mites talk about that. in a minute. So now let's talk about uh, curly top. What is, what is that? Okay. I, I hear that a lot, and I don't know what it is. Curly top virus is a, it's actually a beet virus. It's split, spread by the beet leafhopper. And if you'll kind of compare the two leaves right there, you've yeah. got the big healthy leaf, and then you've got this, this one that's curled. And it, it's usually the top of the leaves, the top of the plant that curls, the leaves will curl up this way, and then the veins will show a little bit purple underneath here. See, now I initially would think that, that plant doesn't have enough water, but that's not that's, that's, that's not the issue. The case, no, or? no, that's, that's not a, well, it doesn't now because it's been cut off well, the plant, right? Obviously. <laughs> But anyway, so that's, that's, that was the way it was on the plant. The plants right next to it were healthy. They were getting plenty huh. of water. It just had this curly top. And the curly top virus will hit one plant and skip another one. And, and it might hit two or three in the whole field, or it might hit several in a spot and then not hit any. But it's a beet leafhopper. There's nothing really we can do about the beet leafhopper. It goes through, affects the plant, and leaves. By the time you know it's been there, it's gone. Nothing you can do about and it. So, and then once the virus is there, there's really nothing you can do about that. So if you get curly top virus, and there are other, other diseases that cause that, and so it's really a good idea to get it checked to see if that's really what you're dealing with. But uh, if you've got the virus, curly top virus, the fruit doesn't perform very well, it doesn't taste very good, you just tear the plant up and throw it away. There's really nothing you can do once you get the virus in there. So okay. you start looking for that, you see the curly top virus, usually it's a little bit pale, you get a purple vein on that curled up leaf. That's kind of what you're looking for, and if you're not quite certain, then you take it to the extension office and they can help you. Okay, you now is this also a tomato plant that I'm holding that is here? That is a tomato plant. What's wrong with this one? This is um, a russet mite. It's a little tiny, very, very tiny microscopic mite that's causing, if you notice the color here, the difference in the color, kind of a bronzing sure, yeah. color of this leaf. The healthy leaf is a nice green color. You start getting that bronzing color, that's very typical of the russet mite. Okay. And it's very, 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 very tiny. You say, yeah, you said you can hardly see them. Uh, yeah, I, I've tried, you know, this is what <laughs> we usually go to look for insects on, and, and I can't see them with this. So okay. you bring them in and look under my microscope, I can see those. Yeah. And what it is, it's kind of like a little cigar shaped mite with little fingers hanging out the front of it, and it crawls around and, okay. and it sucks on the plant, but it, it multiplies very fast and starts at the bottom of the plant typically and then works up and then spreads to other plants. Okay, now we have two, two bugs on sticks here. Right, <laughs> Basically right. Basically on pins, very, very tiny. Now this is not a tomato issue, this is okay. more of a nuisance problem. Nuisance, okay, yeah. so these are, these are bugs that will what, eat the leaves? Well they do, there's actually a, the you elm, <laughs> the elm okay, seed beetle, there's a good picture there on the screen, the elm seed bug and it likes elm trees. Okay. Well we have a really nasty elm tree around here, it's called the Siberian elm. And so th this bug, elm seed bug, was first identified in Idaho 2011, 2012, I think. And since then, it's spread all over. I was down in Carbon County last year, and a guy called me, and that's a long ways away from Idaho, right? Mm -hmm. And he just had lots of these elm seed bugs around his air conditioner on his roof, just thousands of them. Wow. Don't know what to do about them. Well, they're, they're just, they don't cause any health problems for people or for animals, and really not for plants other than they, they'd like to eat off the, the elm seed, which we don't care about that elm anyway. So they're just it's, a pain. It's a nuisance because they try to get into your house. Okay. And well, these, these, they're like the box elder bug, only the box elder bug does it in the fall. These are doing, they're doing it early in the summer, and they're 
kind of a nuisance right now. Okay, Ron, how can folks get more information about how they can uh, better care for their plants and find out if they have bugs or whatever? Well, you can call the extension office. Each county has an extension office, and, and so that's when my job. I'm in Weaver and Morgan County, and so okay. call the ex Utah State University Extension, and so we're the extension agents. Okay, and there we see extension.usu.net. Yes, and there's a garden, what is it, garden.usu.edu is also another site, and they'll have a lot of pictures of these kinds of things as well. So we've got lots of... of uh, information for people. Good. Good advice and a good spot for people to turn to for help. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Dave. All right. We'll take a break. Stay with us, folks.